Hope you're enjoying the show. It's at odds, all thanks to unibet.com.au. Now, don't forget all of the Unibet specials on site, on the website, that is. And we fatten up the odds, so look for those later in the show. Around the grounds time, what's happening in the world of sport, first and foremost? Uh, Jack DeBellin, still making headlines. He's pulled his uh, injunction uh, claim at court and the NRL have raced through the laws into the game. Yep. But what's your own personal opinion? Well, I think I think it's probably the right call. I mean, I think it goes back into court next month. I mean, whatever goes on there, goes on there. But I think for football-wise, it's probably a blessing in disguise because his head cannot be in the game. So what about his teammates? Well, I, I mean, the cameras w- would be there all the time, every training session. So to have him away from from training especially, is going to help the team. Now, is it a blessing in disguise they play the Cowboys? They're $2.02 and two to beat the Cowboys at home, who stunk it up last year yeah. without Thurston, and they haven't got him this year. Are, you, are, you, are they a team that you don't touch for the first couple of weeks as a punter? Well, I reckon the first couple of weeks generally are hard because you've got a lot of teams with new players, new coaches, so you can't be confident mm. that the teams will gel, but... Um yeah, it's a tricky one. Yeah, well, the last time, you've got to have a bet, though. The last time we had Michael Morgan at, <laughs> at halfback, they got to the grand final. Remember how we went on that run? So I think, I mean, not having Jonathan Thurston there, I mean, it's a... It's a well, let's it, be honest, he was... He, he was busted, best, but when see. Michael Morgan was at, at seven, he was brilliant. So round one, I mean, everyone's written off the Warriors. The Bulldogs play the Warriors, but do you... Game, it would be a good game, except that, you know, you, you don't know what you're going to get with either of those teams. You've got the Storm and the Broncos, who you know what you're going to get with, and the Roosters and the Rabbitohs, you're yeah. probably fairly comfortable that Ben is going to have them up and running. Aside from that, is there anything that takes your fancy? Well, I mean, we'll see it later, but um, I, I actually like the Knights. I think they're going to be the real smoky this, yeah. this year. Mm-hmm. They've they got a game against Cronulla, who is their bogey team, so that's an interesting matchup. But I yeah, think the Knights... Penrith have had their problems as well. Manly have had their problems. The new coaches left, right and centre. Penrith. I think Penrith can give it to Parramatta. But I watched Parramatta play in a trial game. and they were against Have they got anybody? An understrength under South Sydney side. So they were dreadful. Yeah. So... Penrith, for me. So of the games that are the big games, Storm $1.64, mm. Broncos two thirty. Yep. you have to back the Storm. Well, you don't have to. I don't no, think so. No, I, don't I don't think so, mate. I know that Storm haven't lost since 2001. I think they've won 17, yeah. in 17 years. But yeah. no Billy Slater. Huge loss. Not only for his attacking. One. 18 <laughs> It's 2001? 18 years? <laughs> 17. But anyway, keep going. 17 years, sorry. <laughs> no Billy Slater. I know what he can do on that right edge with his attack. But it's his defence. When he gets behind that line, tell him plug and holes. They're Huge the loss. Value well, in the first round. Two fifty. Two dollars forty. Pistol. Well, do you take Where's Pete? Two thirty-five. Brisbane. Oh, sorry, the bunnies with Wayne Bennett. I should say. No. Roosters. Oh, no. So I go back to Melbourne. Roosters. One to twelve. Melbourne. They're always in it. They just give yourself. Yeah. yeah. But you got seventeen right. in a row. You're going to go for eighteen. I'm with you. I'm Great odds. Lock of the week. We'll see next Wednesday. See who have this. You don't get this. You don't get this for nothing. Okay. Yeah. Let's just talk. We don't say anything. The All Star Mile is an interesting concept. Basically, it was a popular vote, and then Racing Victoria came in and picked four others that they thought would fatten up the race. Did they get it the wrong way around? Should it be four by popular and twelve? Selected? Should they make it a select field, not just yeah, a Richie Ditch one? Interesting concept, Ross. I, I see that the major issue with horses being voted by the public is you're getting horses in there, low rated horses like 75 rated horses, yeah. 80 rated horses. Now, if they happen to get in the way of the good horses down the home straight, you're going to be pretty dirty. So yeah. I think there should be a minimum benchmark rating on a horse. Got to be, I reckon it should be 100 and above to get but in But I, the I race. think if you're going to have an all star mile, then the people organising it should be voting on the stars. It shouldn't just be. Mm. You know, or they put out, put out 20 a field, teams yeah. put out a field. and you picked which one, yeah. you know, like a, yeah. you know, a, a, what well, happens in, in the sport, MVP. There's a, there's a wild card or opportunities for others to come in from the punters, right? But the, it's got to be 80% picked by the experts. There's about you eight horses that are 150 to 1 in that yeah, race. Which, Did you ever get one? picked for the All-Star Weekend? In the NBA? In the NBA. Well, what, to do the waters? No, come like, on. No, I was Don't so far from it. They Great put me up segue the into shooter. basketball for our man in the middle. <laughs> One all going across to Perth. We've already established he hates Perth. I'm sorry, Perth people. And I love Perth. No, I don't. His I views are not those of the... We love Perth. I hope you don't have no, to comment I have to there. clarify that. Little I creatures. don't hate Perth at all. I actually respect Perth. It's been a great club. It's their fans that annoy me. 
Oh, I can, What's that noise? So you What's hate that noise? Beep, beep. beep. <laughs> <laughs> you haven't no, got to commentate over there. You will get yeah, I love walking in there. I have oh. a chest out, no problem <laughs> whatsoever. <laughs> they are the most insecure bunch you'll ever <laughs> Who's going to win? No, we love them. Seriously. Well, well, I know well, you're he's not going to say Perth now, no, I, I'm, I still really believe that Melbourne will win it. 33 of the last 35 games in the grand final have been won by home teams. But I think Melbourne are going to step up. They've got the confidence. They won game two by 18 in Melbourne. Friday night, they're going to get They had home. a crack in game one, but then Perth just sort of eked away and just looked like they were in control. It was an 18-2 run in the first six minutes of the third quarter yeah. that blew the game open, foul trouble for Mitch I was going to say that, but I left yeah. it open. Well, well, why is there such a big home court advantage in basketball? Because the dimensions of the field are the same. There's no wind. Why is it such a big thing being at home? I think, the well, people. travel come into it, five hours of travel fans. and all the rest of it. But I think the fans put so much pressure on the referees, so many yeah. more calls for the local team. And right uh, March Madness, uh, we sort of get a little bit of the madness, but how mad is March Madness? Which is the college basketball month of mayhem. Yeah, I, I'm more an NBA guy than I am a college guy, but when it gets to March Madness and you see these massive crowds, it's such a big thing for these schools, huge crowds, mm. to be, and it's, it's knockout. So 64 well, teams, you lose, you're out. All well, the way to the final. ESPN, I used to work for them, they would get the Good president point. of the USA to do his predictions on a March Madness ladder. It was insane that the president would mm. spend an hour and a half doing his predictions. But anyway, not that's this all president. Not this yeah. president. No, Donald Trump, I don't think he will. On the golf course, don't uh, The Australian Grand Prix is happening this weekend in Melbourne at a cost of a billion dollars to the uh, state government and the taxpayers of Victoria. But having said that, <laughs> speaking of money, Mark, uh, not Mark, Daniel Ricciardo, of course, <laughs> has dumped... Red Bull for uh, a very, very slow Renault. Hmm. Yeah. Well, no, no one he's always smiling. You know, he's always smiling. Now we know. Getting paid a lot to drive a slow car, but you want to win, don't you? Well, would you guys ever take the money and pay for a slower team? Or a oh, ask Fletch. Team? I did. I did. Uh, How'd that go for you? We got two wooden spoons in a row while my former team got two grand finals. So uh, I loved it. I loved every minute of it. No, no pressure. No pressure. No, there's a lot of pressure. Mm-hmm. I was captain. Two wooden right. spoons, though. Didn't end well. So that wraps up our uh, little look at the world of sport. Plenty to look forward to this weekend in racing and rugby league, of course. High on the list if you're keen to get involved. Don't forget, go to the website, unibet.com.au.